Is that a bit of uh, this shell that went in there? <laughs> and cut that out. So today I'm making you Yorkshire puddings, Melly style. They've got henlim, dried mint in them, and I cannot wait for you to see them. So I have tried and tested Yorkshire puddings many times and I finally got to a recipe which I guarantee you is foolproof. I use 200 millilitres of milk and then I use four eggs and those four medium eggs, really important they're medium. So four medium eggs into the 200 millilitres of milk and get your elbow right in there, a bit of elbow grease. Whisk them right up. You can use an electric whisk, but it's fine. <laughs> I love, I love doing it like this. It's like my mashed potatoes. Double sieved. <laughs> In fact, my sieve broke last week. Right, so now we've whisked those four medium eggs into the 200 millilitres of milk. I'm going to add 100 grams of plain flour. That goes straight in. And again, give them a really, really good whisk. You want to get rid of any, any lumps in there. You want a light batter. You don't want a thick batter that's going to give you dense Yorkshire puddings. On the maximum rise, I'm going to add a pinch of salt to the batter in a moment as well. And that's it. It's going to go in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. So often, I can make this an hour or two in advance of making actually cooking the Yorkshire puddings. And if you didn't know, you can also freeze them once cooked. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. The lumps have all gone. Got a nice smooth batter and that's ready for the fridge. And while that cools down in the fridge, I'm going to prep the topping for the Yorkshire puddings. So the topping for the Yorkshire puddings are essentially grated hellim, dried mint, sesame and nigella seeds. The nigella seeds are also known as black onion seeds. And they go on the top of the batter into the hot oil. And so when they puff up and rise, you've got that lovely salty, minty topping to the Yorkshires and they're perfect. Perfect with a cup of tea, perfect as a snack, perfect with your roast dinner if you really want. So I'm just gonna grate the helim. And I like to use the fine grater, but I mean, you can use the, the thicker one if you want, but I quite like the fine grater. So I've got 100 grams of helim here which I'm grating and I'm going to stir in a tablespoon of dried mint and the sesame and nigella seeds straight in there so that I can do a quick topping because you really need to get the batter straight back into the oven. As soon as it hits the hot oil, it needs to go, the tray needs to go back into the oven. So this topping's got to work quickly as well. So helim is the Turkish word for halloumi. So um, it's exactly the same cheese. So if you're in the supermarket, it's likely that you'll be looking for halloumi cheese every little bit. It doesn't matter if there's a few little chunks. When I was a kid and my mum would grate her limb to put on our pasta, um, which we still have and my children absolutely love, she'd always have like a little chunk of her limb at the end and that would be mine. I would nick that. That chunk was always mine to just eat. So I'm going to add the dried mint and the seeds to the her limb now. I'm just going to use a fork to mix it all up with. So the dried mint goes in and I use a fork so I can really kind of get the mint in between those helim kind of strands. Um, I'm going to just add nigella and sesame seeds straight in there as well. And that's fine, you just put that to one side until you're ready to pour the batter into the hot oil. And I cannot stress enough how hot that oil in your tray has to be. As soon as the batter hits, it's got to sizzle, it's got to bubble. And that's when you know you're going to get gorgeous, light, fluffy Yorkshire puddings with this gorgeous helim and dried mint topping. Okay, so just drop about three quarters of a teaspoon of oil, sunflower, vegetable, rapeseed into each round of the muffin tray and just brush it around the edges. So this oil, once it's been in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes on the top shelf, about 230 degrees centigrade in a fan assisted oven and as high as your conventional oven will go really. Okay, so when you take your batter out of the fridge, just give it a quick whisk just to make sure that it's all evenly spread before you pour it into the tray. So let's give it a quick whisk. There we go. I'm gonna take that tray out of the oven now and straight in with the batter, like no mucking around. 
and you want to fill each round up about three quarters of the way. Can you hear that sizzle? That's what you need to hear. Pop it straight in. Don't worry if by the end some of them are not sizzling as much. It's absolutely fine. Go straight in. And then what you're going to do before you pop it back into the oven is just give each one a quick, very quick top, top, top. Go, go, go. It's like a military operation. Chuck it on. And anything that you, any head limb or seeds that you've got left, chuck it over some pasta. It's absolutely fine. Straight back in the oven now. Don't forget to turn the oven down to 190C, fan assisted. I'm like literally, <laughs> like going, going, going. In they go. Please don't let the heat out. Turn it down. Hand me down. <laughs> that was like bush, bush, bush. Okay, the Yorkies have had half an hour in the oven. I've left them in for the maximum cooking time because I quite like them browned, really browned on top and cooked through. So, moment of truth. And here they are. There we go. Look at those absolute beauties. Look at those. I mean, you can use this Yorkshire pudding recipe mix for just standard Yorkies as well without the head limb and the dried mint. But if I said that I wasn't chuffed with those, then I'd definitely been lying. So they look absolutely gorgeous. And this bit, you don't have to do, but I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit more of this gorgeous topping over them. Cup of tea and you're done. video please click and subscribe 